I say frankly to the American statesmen who are now managing the genocide in Palestine that we do not welcome to expansion of the war in the region. But I warn if the genocide in Gaza continues, they will not be spared from this fire. That was Iran's foreign minister issuing a warning to the United States while speaking at the United Nations yesterday. North Korea is now accusing the U.S. of being an accomplice to, quote, Israel's genocide in Gaza. The United States striking two facilities in eastern Syria overnight. These facilities are used by Iranian-backed soldiers, and it happens after 19 attacks against U.S. troops in the Middle East. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Carlos Jimenez. He's a member of the House Armed Services and Homeland Security Committees and the Select Committee on China. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Your reaction to all of this? Well, I'm wondering if that was a proportional response. Uh, it, took, uh, it took the eyes of the world and the eyes of America to be actually focused on the area before the Biden administration took any action against these terrorists that have apparently been um, launching strikes against our personnel for some time. So, uh, you know, yesterday I, I, I thought I heard it was, you know, a squadron of F-15s and F-16s, and now... Now I find out it's two F-16s, so I'm wondering exactly what damage was done to what, and will it actually deter these terrorist groups from continuing to attack our troops in the Middle East? It sounds like you're skeptical, Congressman. You think? Uh, you th yeah. That's because I've been a congressman here for about three years, and nothing that the Biden administration tells me ever pans out. Uh, remember, I've been always telling you, uh, Maria, and everybody else, never listen to what the Biden administration tells you. Watch what they're doing. So one of the things we need to do in the Armed Services Committee is to actually get some footage of what exactly was hit, was hit and what kind of damage was done to these terrorist groups. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it certainly is getting uh, increasingly dangerous. Uh, do you expect the U.S. is going yeah. to have a bigger footprint in this war? Yeah, maybe, and unfortunately so, because we shouldn't be in this situation. The only reason that we're in this situation is the continued weakness of the Biden administration ever since uh, he took office. This administration has to go. The world is a much more dangerous place because of this administration, because of the weakness that we have shown ever since President Biden and his secretary of state uh, took power. And so what, what happened in Afghanistan was uh, just the beginning. Now we see a war in Ukraine. Now we see a war in the Middle East. Now we see proxies trying to uh, drive us into war. And, yeah, I, uh, I fear that very much. And, and for me, 2025 can't come soon enough. Well, I mean, one of the issues is the readiness of the United States, right? I mean, all of this conversation about how this administration has led the military, uh, bringing up, you know, gender studies, et cetera, et cetera, uh, are we ready? Should we actually have this situation erupt? Uh, because, what, a month ago, the president told the world that we were running out of ammunition. Remember that one? No, I, look, uh, we, the, the, the one problem that we have is that we've identified really big gaps in our defense uh, industries here. Uh, for too long, uh, we have relied on our stockpiles, and we've allowed that industry to kind of atrophy. Uh, we need to revive that. That's why uh, House Republicans want a much bigger um, uh, defense budget uh, to, to get our, our defense capabilities up. We need to produce uh, more fighters. We need to uh, do that uh, faster. We need to produce new munitions, new weapon systems. Uh, for the first time in my lifetime, the United States is not leading in all types of uh, advanced weapon systems. And so that's very troubling to me. We need to ramp it up and ramp it up quick because this world is getting to be a much more dangerous place, especially when the United States shows the weakness that it has been showing for the last uh, two and a half, three years. Well, this administration has also shown real weakness on the wide open border, obviously. And we're watching yeah. a, a development happen over and over again. I want to point your attention to what Florida Highway Patrol and border officials are telling us. They have arrested 17 Chinese nationals after they arrived in Key Largo by boat. Uh, the group consisted of 20 total uh, illegal uh, migrants, 11 adult Chinese males, 11 adult Chinese males, six adult Chinese females, and three adult men from Ecuador. Border Protection sources telling Fox that in the first 13 days of October, agents encountered more than 2,000 Chinese nationals. 
Uh, look, uh, this, this is largely military-aged men that are coming here from China. And the numbers are up, what, 1,300 percent year over year, Congressman. I know Key Largo is your district. What can you do about yeah. it? And what is your reaction to these Chinese nationals coming into America? And now we find they're coming through Key Largo by boat. Well, that, the, the question is, how many, this, these are the ones we caught. You know, we, uh, we know that we have over close to 2 million, if not over 2 million people that have crossed the border during the Biden administration. And we haven't fancy idea who they are. Uh, we don't know who they are, uh, where they're going, why they're here, uh, and how they got here. Uh, and so, uh, you know, again, this is the, the Biden administration, the utter disaster that is the Biden administration. It seems like everything that runs counter to American interests, it really interests the Biden administration to do that. And so, yeah, I'm really concerned. Look, the, the Chinese uh, have established a footprint and a pretty big footprint in uh, Central and South America. They're establishing much greater ties with communist Cuba. Uh, they have, they're building infrastructure projects 50 miles from here in, uh, in the Bahamas. And so why were these, you know, Chinese nationals trying to get into the United States? Again, why? What, what are they doing here? What is their purpose? They're all, you know, military, military age uh, men, or most of them are. And so exactly what is it that they want to do? And I'm sure that, you know, maybe some of them are here for economic reasons, but uh, I'm sure some of them are here for more nefarious purposes. Well, I mean, that's a good question, because this is what I want to ask you. Um, China is a communist country. Can you just get up and leave? I mean, can all those people just get up and leave, or do you need permission from the communist government oh, you to... Need... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you need permission to get out. Out of any communist yeah. country, you have to have permission to get out of. You just can't say, hey, I think I'm taking a vacation over here or somewhere. And, uh, that's right. And that's just so not that's the way it, it, it goes. Is this yeah. being directed well, look, by Xi Jinping, have... and what is he up to? <laughs> well, uh, he's up to no good. That's what he's up to. I mean, don't yeah. don't believe that uh, Xi Jinping is our is our friend. Uh, he is our he is our number one adversary in the world. He wants China to okay. become the greatest economic and military power by 2049. Right. And I think he's uh, right. he's well on his way. And so okay. he's up to no good. Uh, all right. So yeah, <laughs> there's no question that he's up to no good. He's not our friend. So real quick, what can you do about it? We've got a new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, in place now. He sat down with Fox for the first interview since being elected on Wednesday. Johnson discussed where he stands on the Ukraine funding, whether it should be tied to the Israel funding. Here's a clip. Watch. I told the staff at the White House today that our consensus among House Republicans is that we need to bifurcate those issues. And we can't allow Vladimir Putin to prevail in Ukraine because I don't believe it would stop there. And it would probably encourage and empower China to perhaps make a move on Taiwan. We have to make sure that the White House is providing the people with some accountability for the dollars. So your sense of what you can do in Congress and how will you respond to the president's request to tie all of this money in an aid package to uh, Ukraine as well as Israel together? I, I agree with, uh, with our speaker 100%. Uh, I've said that before, that that package has to be bifurcated and each, uh, each piece has to be voted on separately. Ukraine, the money that goes to Ukraine has to be accounted for, uh, even though uh, you know, I do support the effort. We cannot uh, withdraw our support for the Ukrainian people who are fighting for their freedom. And if we do, that shows even greater weakness on the part of the United States, that we are not a trusted security partner. That being said, the money, most of it is munitions, needs to be accounted for to make sure that it's being used the right way. All right, Congressman, we're going to be watching all of that. We so appreciate your time. Carlos Jimenez joining us this morning.